Um, we're obviously uh, very thankful to uh, to our, our organization, MLSC, uh, Brendan Shanahan, and, and our ownership group for, for giving us the opportunity to do this with Austin. And, and then most importantly, uh, thankful to Austin, uh, his parents, Brian and Emma, for their commitment to the Toronto Maple Leafs and also to uh, Judd Moldaver uh, and Jeff Jackson from Wasserman Orr uh, Group. Uh, they've been excellent to work with uh, throughout this whole process. So. Um, I'll, at this point, I'll turn it over to Austin, and uh, it's a very exciting day for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, thank you. Is it important, Austin, to get this deal done now, much sooner than later, to you? I don't know if it was important, but I think uh, you know everything came together. Um, and for me, uh, you know, I guess you could always wait, but I had no problem uh, signing during the season. Um, you know, and obviously, I'm very proud uh, proud to be a Maple Leaf today, and uh, for the foreseeable future. How long were the talks going on for? Uh, I don't know. I think they kind of um, you know, heated up a bit the last two weeks. And uh, my agents, uh, you know, Kyle and, and management, uh, you know, I'm sure talked uh, quite a bit and then, um, you know, kind of finalized it today. So uh, it's, it's definitely a pretty special day for myself, my family, and you know, I'm very excited. What kind of thoughts go through your mind when you look at those numbers and actually sign when it's official? Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty special, you know. Uh, I think you do a lot of, uh, you know, you kind of think back uh, a little bit and uh, kind of go through when you're a kid and everything. But you know, for me, I, I'm extremely proud and I'm happy. And um, you know, I know my family uh, who's here is extremely proud of me as well. So it's it's a special day, and um, you know, I, I love playing here. I love the city, uh, my teammates, uh, management, the whole staff, bottom, top to bottom. So um, you know, for me, it's uh, it's extremely special. What do you enjoy most about being a Maple Leaf, playing in the city? Well, I don't think there's anything like playing in the city. Uh, just you know, from our from our fans, um, you know, the support we get uh, day in day out, walking around the street, getting recognized. I mean, that's not something I ever really imagined when I was a kid, uh, growing up in Arizona, to play in a market like this. So, uh, it's, it's definitely something uh, that I don't take for granted. Um, you know, my family. I don't think anybody on the team takes for granted to, to play in a, a special market like this. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, we want to accomplish our, our ultimate goal, which is the Stanley Cup, and make the city proud. And um, you know, we're working towards that every day. Notable what, contracts what? over the last couple of years, guys like David Eichel arrived at eight years. How did you arrive at, at five years? Is the right length for you? Um, you know, a lot of guys have done the five years. Um, you know, before I think, you know, we we understand the the cap restraints that we have and that the league and every single team has. So, um, you know, we kind of. Uh, we went through everything from three to eight, um, and we kind of settled on uh, on five. And um, you know, I think both sides are obviously happy and uh, happy to kind of get this over with and move on. And um, so, you know, for myself, I mean, I'm, I'm proud, and for my family, uh, extremely excited. With this five-year deal, and it's um, not the eight years that you know some people had talked about, but the five years and the team that's been assembled now. Do you feel the pressure from fans to to win now, and and you know? get that ultimate goal that you just talked about? Uh, I think we'll always feel the, the pressure from fans here. Um, but, you know, they, they want a, a team, uh, a championship team, and, and, you know, we want to give it to them. The city uh, deserves it. So, um, you know, for us, I think, you know, we're not too, uh, too we don't get too caught up in all that. Uh, we take it day by day. And obviously, we got a special team, a lot of talented players. And, um, you know, like I said, we, we, we were doing everything to, uh, to get to that uh, ultimate goal, get to the top of the mountain, and, um, you know, we work every day to, to accomplish that. If someone told you when you were maybe a teenager that in your, in your fourth NHL season you'd be making three million more than C.D. Crosby, you would have thought what? <laughs> I would have thought they are crazy, um, but I think uh, that's the way the market is. It moves, and, um, you know, I never thought, uh, I mean, it was always a dream of mine to play in the NHL, but obviously, uh, you know, when you get down to it, it's it's a lot of money, and it's uh, you know, it's it's great. I mean, it's obviously an exciting day for myself. I'm proud to wear the Maple Leaf every night. Um, you know, I want to make my family proud, uh, the city of Toronto proud, and I think everybody in this locker room does as well. Austin, were any other teams making offers to you? I don't know. Austin, how involved were you in the process, and, and was it any of it a distraction? No, I mean, it wasn't a distraction. Um, I mean, I would talk with my agents and my dad, who was also involved uh, every once in a while, but um, you know, I kind of left that to them. I, you know, I have full, full faith and trust in, uh, in Judd Moldaver, Jeff Jackson, uh, the Wasserman team, uh, and to let them do what they do. And uh, talking, uh, let them you know, speak with Kyle and the management, and then 
um, you know, when they came to me and said, you know, we think we have a deal done and uh, to move forward, and you know, I was obviously happy with it, and here we are today. What was some of the reaction that you were getting from text messages this morning from teammates and players across the league? Uh, just a lot of congratulations uh, from teammates, uh, friends back home, family members, uh, guys around the league that I've played with before. So it's obviously uh, pretty nice, uh, you know, to get that. And, um, you know, just all in all, it's a, it's a very exciting day for me. And at what? this point, do you feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulder where you can just focus strictly on, on playing now at this point for the rest of the season? Yeah, it's nice to get it over with. Uh, it was never really, I don't think, a weight on my shoulders. It was just something that was there and something that you guys like to talk to me about every so every couple of weeks or so. And uh, But it was never really something that bothered me too much. I knew whether it was now after the season, the, this previous summer, I knew it was going to get done regardless. And um, you know, until then, uh, you know, you never really know what to expect or what's going to happen. So here we are now. What, you know, what role did your family play in your decision making? You, you've mentioned them several times. What sort of conversations did you have with them? I mean, they play a huge role. Uh, I'm very close with my family, and you know, very fortunate to obviously have them. And uh, what they do for me is, uh, you know, incredible. What they've done for me since I was a kid. So uh, they they played a huge role, especially my dad uh, and talking. You know, with Judd and Jeff, uh, you know, every day, um, you know, just getting a feel for it. And, you know, they want what's best for me, and I always do Judd and Jeff. And, um, you know, they played a, a significant part, and I'm very lucky to have them. You're one piece of the, the core here, Austin. What do you think makes it special enough that you guys can potentially accomplish that goal you talked about? Exactly. I mean, we've got so many special players, and, um, you know, we, like I said before, we want to build a, a championship team here in Toronto, make the city proud. and. Um, you know that starts with all of us uh, in the locker room. So I want to be here for uh, for a long time, and uh, obviously all all the guys here want to win, uh, make the city proud, uh, give them what uh, what they deserve, and that's the Stanley Cup. Do you know for certainty what salary is going to be now for five years? Do you know for certainty where you're going to be as a player, or what you want to be? I know you have such high goals for yourself. Yeah, of course. Um, I do. And individually, I hold myself to, to a higher standard than I think anybody else does. So um, all that stuff, uh, you know, I kind of keep personal. But in the end, uh, you know, you're measured on championships. And that's what I want to do here is, is help this team and, uh, and be productive in any way I can to, to win a championship. And uh, that's the ultimate goal. I'll take two more questions. Thing about hockey players and bringing out more personality and you want to bring out more personality. Does this give you freedom now to be more you? I mean, regardless if I'm making one dollar or eleven million dollars, I mean, I'm not going to change who I am. I'm going to be myself every day, and um, you know, to me, uh, yeah, uh, nothing really changes for me. Just I'm going to be myself every day. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to play hockey and do what I love. And um, you know, now I'm fortunate to, to do it for a lot of money, uh, like I have been the last couple of years. So. Um, you know, I, I feel very fortunate and very lucky, and uh, especially to do it to do it in a city like Toronto. It's uh, you know something I never really imagined as a kid, so it's it's very special. I feel uh, you know extremely honored. How are you Last going question. to celebrate? Uh, I go go to dinner with my family. Um, you know, spend some time with them. They came up this week, and um, you know we're going on a long road trip here, so it'll be nice to just kind of relax uh, with them, and um, you know probably talk about some of the, the old days when I was a little kid that. Uh, it was probably a big disturbance to them, and uh, you know now obviously uh, signing this contract is a really special day for all of us. Jacobs, thank you. <laughs> I'm not telling you. Can you afford it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Similar question for for you, Kyle. It's sure. uh, we gave over here. How important was this to get this done now, at least moving forward, given the business that you've got ahead of you and what you've just seen behind you? Well, I think they're all important, Paul. That we've got a, a number of, um, of very important players here to to our program, and uh, obviously there's been a starting with John signing in the summer, and and even you, you know, go back a few years to uh, to Morgan Nas, and, and then trading for Freddie, and, uh, and then then Patrick Marlowe elected to sign here, then John, and you're, you're you know then Williams deal. You're they're all pieces of the puzzle that have to fit. So um, obviously uh, appreciate. Uh, the work that that Austin and his uh, his people put into this it's been a long process and I certainly understand that when players don't want to deal with this during the season but uh, Judd and, and Jeff and, and Austin's family were uh, were excellent so we really appreciate that it's a big help to us uh, just in terms of having some certainty as we kind of navigate through here 
uh, leading into the trade deadline and, and uh, you know their cooperation was something that uh, gave us the certainty to, to make the move last week for Jake uh, and, and having an idea from Judd about where we were going to land and, and sort of finalizing that uh, not until the last uh, few hours but uh, it's that type of uh, that type of commitment from them that's allowed us to uh, to move on as, a, as an organization and, and obviously we're thrilled to lock Austin in. How, how does a five-year deal uh, allow you to make things fit versus something that's a little bit longer? I think the way that the, just the nature of uh, deals are in hockey, Chris, um, you know, if, if you, for the younger players, if you want the longer term, you're also taking up uh, more of their prime, so the, the AAV rises, and um, it was certainly, that was the intention at the beginning from, from Austin's side. Um, you know, they were, um, they were focused on that, and, and just as we kind of work through it together and continue to have more discussions, we're trying to balance, obviously, uh, keeping this together while also contending and not having to delete uh, parts from it. And, and uh, we're very thankful that, uh, that they were, were willing to, uh, to move um, from their, their desired term. And obviously, everyone wants to be here for as long as possible. And we were able to find a, an AAV that works for everybody. Um, and uh, we were able to lock him in and, and also to, uh, to maintain some, some, some flexibility as we move ahead. So that's how it all kind of came to be. Well, when you look at how salaries are changing for guys on their second contracts, sure. and you've experienced that now in two successive negotiations, how much more of, how much more of a challenge is it uh, to build a team that has a long span of contention when this is kind of the norm for second contracts for these kind of guys? Yeah, we spend a lot of time talking about that, Bruce. I mean, that's it's our job. We're trying to, I think, as Austin touched on during his discussion. We're trying to build a team that can uh, that can have sustained success, so not just uh, contend once. I think you look. There's a litany of teams, and and all across every uh, every professional sport, uh, they're very good teams for a long time, but they can't ever push it across the finish line. And um, I think a lot of that is is luck related and luck based. And I think we want to give ourselves the the maximum number of, of chances we can to to make a real good go at it. So uh, in saying that, keeping the young core of our team together, and then. Uh, building out a program where they want to stay here on their subsequent contracts, I think that that falls on us. It doesn't fall on the on the players, and it's up to us to explain it to them and and uh, and to be very clear in our communications with them as they as they come along. But I think that the the issue at hand here is is one that we're very fortunate to have. It, it creates some headaches at times, but uh, we do have a very talented uh, you know uh, young team, and we'd rather be trying to keep that together than probably where we were at the beginning, which was trying to build it up. So it's uh, at, at times it. It can become uh, a bit challenging, but uh, we're fortunate to have the quality of people we have here as well. They're willing to work and uh, and to meet us halfway. So Kyle, how, how do you um, taking these things into consideration? How do you expect mm -hmm. things to unfold then with Martyrs Camp? Well, I think that's been a, a pretty clear one, uh, Terry. They've, they've uh, we're we're respecting uh, the wishes of Darren, and um, you know if if they were to change their stance on it, then then we're open we're open to that, but. For, for right now, we'll, we'll respect their uh, we'll respect their wishes and and um, you know we'll, we'll carry on with the season here. Well, well, he's he's a special like, plan. Uh, other guys like Cap, Cap and, and sure. What's going on with them? Uh, as of right now, we're I mean th those are you know they're relatively both rookies, so both getting their feet wet in the league and and they've developed well under Mike and his staff this year after after graduating from uh, from the Marlies last year. So we're just. Continue to see them grow and mature, and obviously, you know, we, we know that they need contracts as well. But um, you know, we'll continue to let the, the season play out and let that sample size grow, and we'll begin having some discussions with their people uh, probably after the trade deadline. Will there be a precedent for the rest of the league? Uh, I, I don't really worry about that. I worry about our team and, and our uh, our you know what we're responsible for here. Um, I think you know we're, we're beholden to the Maple Leafs and and. Uh, I worry about you know what the people think when we walk in here and when I walk in the door at home and I, d I don't worry too much about the rest of the league. I'm sure some people will like it and some people won't and that's just the way it goes. When you have an investment like this in a, in a player, how do your expectations grow and evolve for Austin now? Well, I think it's uh, I think we we made the you know we, we make the investment in Austin because he's shown a tremendous potential. He's uh, you know he's a center and he scores at a at an elite elite rate that that few have matched uh, in their first three years in hockey and. Uh, so with him, we, we know what he's capable of, and he's still only uh, a very young man. And uh, I think with that uh, means he, he has a lot of potential uh, that we have to help him to reach. So uh, I think the, the contract is a, uh, signifies uh, his talent level and his ability, and, and also for us um, what we owe him in terms of helping him to continue to develop uh, you know, on and off the ice as a, as a young person. 
he comes from a great family, so he's got that instilled in him, and uh, he's, he's, he's easy to work with and wants to get better and willing to do extra, and it's just for us now continuing to push that along as he you know, continues to grow and mature into his mid-20s and, and uh, become one of the best players in the league. Have there been any serious so uh, attempts to sign Austin back last summer? Was this a process that really picked up once he had Williams' situation settled? No, we, we've, Judd has been great. We've, we've been, uh, we've, we started uh, talking, I think, really early July, right as soon as we're really able to. And these things are, are uh, complicated. They're, they're not as simple as people see, but people want them to be at times. And, and uh, the Judd has been great in having continual dialogue and uh, willing, to, uh, willing to discuss different scenarios and, and really um, all across the board, different terms, different numbers. And so it, it's, been a, it's been a good process with, with Judd, very thorough. Um, and so that, that's really been, there hasn't been any change since, since William signed, none at all. Uh, we'll take two more questions, guys. Kyle, at what point did it go from eight year discussion to maybe five, six? I think throughout we've been we've been trying to be flexible throughout and try to figure out what works for everybody. So I couldn't really pinpoint a specific time. I think right off the the opening, um, we started to discuss a number of different uh, number of different options that might be um, uh, th that might be enticing to everybody, and, and it just kind of grew to into the five. Getting this deal done now uh, during the season, does that make your job easier in terms of negotiating with Marner once the season's over? Well, uh, I, I'm not sure about that. I think the you know Mitch uh, is a wonderful young player. We love having him. He's one of the, he's he's someone who loves hockey every day and comes in and he's the same great energy, great enthusiasm, and uh, that's his personal preference. There's gonna be no pressure from from us on that. Um, you know, for us, if, if they if they want to talk, we're here, but we're we're respecting their their wishes, and and I would expect everyone else would as well in, in terms of how they handle Mitch, and and when they're ready to sit down, we'll talk. He's going to be a Toronto Maple Leaf for a long time, uh, regardless of how we have to come to that. So so it's no issue at all. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.